Hey everybody, it's Charlie. This is going to be my new Fantastic Four X-Men Wolverine Marvel Phase 4 Phase 5 video. So there's a whole bunch of stuff happening. Kevin Feige was talking about Fantastic Four at Comic-Con, talking about rebooting those characters, rebooting the X-Men characters, but there's a really important reason why they were setting the stage for Fantastic Four to debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe before Wolverine and the new versions of all these X-Men characters. So we'll break it all down. We're doing a new round of the Disney Plus streaming service giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your best Wolverine or Fantastic Four theory on the video. So why is Marvel's Fantastic Four reboot movie happening before Marvel reboots Wolverine and the core X-Men characters? Well, number five, Kevin Feige was talking about Fantastic Four way more than the other Fox Marvel franchises at Comic-Con, even more than Deadpool. And Deadpool is one of the proven box office earners Marvel is really excited to start doing stuff with that character without necessarily changing him. He'll still be rated R. Brian Reynolds has even started trolling other MCU characters, particularly Tom Holland, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, because of all this Sony Marvel MCU business. Listen to this clip of Kevin Feige talk about the debut of the new Fantastic Four team in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The interviewer is a little bit funny, but pay attention to what Kevin Feige says about them. Fantastic Four, what story are you going to tell that hasn't been told yet? Uh, all of that is spoilers, but I'm extremely excited about those characters and about, uh, and about bringing Marvel's first family um, up sort of to the platform and the level that they deserve. Are you anywhere near casting? No. 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 Story? No. No. <laughs> no. See all the stuff we did today? <laughs> but you dropped all these teases. I just said we didn't have time to talk about it. Listening to that, you can tell how excited he is to do a new Fantastic Four movie, a good Fantastic Four movie. His quote about bringing them up to level, quote unquote, that they deserve is just a little bit of a Kevin Feige burn on previous Fantastic Four movies. Usually you don't catch him doing sick burns like that. He's not completely ignoring the X-Men characters. He did mention mutants right after he said Fantastic Four during the Marvel Phase 4 Comic-Con panel. But they've been doing a lot of work before this to try and set up the debut of the Fantastic Four. They even have that post credit scene moment during Spider-Man Far From Home. So careful for spoilers for the ending of Spider-Man Far From Home if you haven't seen that movie yet. Right at the end of that movie, there's a very notable billboard Easter egg construction sign, which is a bit of a meta Easter egg, implying that Marvel is constructing a new version of Fantastic Four within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, you won't believe what we're working on next. Then you have the one, two, three, four. It's a little bit funnier now because of what's happened with Sony, Marvel, and the Spider-Man character potentially leaving the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But when they were still making that movie, that was still part of the plan, trying to see these future movies. Like he says, we're laying seeds for all these big things that are coming up in Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5, just the same way that they seeded the Infinity Gauntlet in the early Marvel Phase 1 films. Are you already planting the seeds for the next crossover event for if it's Secret Wars or what. Like, does Phase 4 start to plant the seeds for whatever we're going to see? Because we obviously saw Thanos, the whole Infinity Saga, the seeds were planted way early on. Uh, yes. We debated what we should announce today. Should we announce 4 and 5? We've planned them out. We've got five years down the road. And I was like, I think you, yeah. 11 projects in two years is plenty. They have not started teasing X-Men yet in that same way. That's really where the Eternals movie in Marvel Phase 4 comes in. The Eternals movie is going to help lay the groundwork for how mutants can exist in the MCU and have been around this whole time, and we haven't known about them till now. Before, he says they're still in early planning stages for the new Fantastic Four movie. They haven't officially locked down any actors yet. The reason why you keep seeing the John Krasinski, Emily Blunt fan art as Reed Richards and Sue Storm is mostly because it just looks really, really badass. And those two actors have a history with Marvel movies. If you haven't heard the secret history of John Krasinski and Emily Blunt in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Kevin Feige and Marvel were both after them for roles as main A-list Avengers characters during Marvel Phase 1 when they were still just kicking things off with the Infinity Saga. They go way, way back. If you can believe it, John Krasinski was originally one of Marvel's first picks as Captain America over Chris Evans for a little while. Now, watching all those movies, now you can't imagine anyone else besides Chris Evans playing that character. He is Captain America, Steve Rogers. Avengers! Assemble. But for a little while, John Krasinski was their early pick. And Chris Evans actually turned Marvel down a couple times when they offered him the role before he finally accepted. 
This is the hilarious story that John Krasinski tells about why he didn't become Captain America. I heard that you screen tested for Captain America. That's that right. That role. In yeah. my head, I got the part. Yeah. <laughs> What was that was that process like? Because that's a real uh, question when you're trying to think, like, am I, am I one of those superhero guys or not? You know, would I want to do that? Could I do that? So when you had that test, what was it like? It was a big deal for me because, I mean, first of all, I love those Marvel movies. Right. I'm, I love superheroes. I love imagination. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when they asked me to test, they actually allowed me to put on the suit. I was on a set. It was all very interesting. I feel like as I'm talking about this, someone from Marvel is going to be like... <laughs> And just like, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not allowed to talk about it at all. Yeah. Um, but I remember the, the only bummer of it was, I was putting on the suit, just watching it. I was like, this is so amazing. And I got about right to my waist. I was still shirtless, feeling pretty good about myself. It wasn't 13 hours yet, but right. I felt pretty good. And all of a sudden, Chris Hemsworth walked by his Thor, and he's like, all right, mate. And I went, I'm good. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I should so listening to that, he actually took himself out of the role. It wasn't that Marvel didn't want him as Captain America. He just felt like he was not the right person for that. And you have to imagine that this is all happening while he's in the middle of doing The Office. So he's primarily known as Jim from The Office while all this Captain America stuff is happening. I think he was probably right to take himself out of the running. He's a great actor. I love some of his other stuff that he's been doing recently. But I just can't picture anyone else but Chris Evans being Captain America right now. If you haven't seen any of the stuff he's been doing recently, though, he's been doing way more serious drama. He did A Quiet Place. His own projects are blowing up. He's actually doing a sequel to that movie right now, which is why you haven't heard about him doing any Marvel movies the last couple of years. You watch him in things like the Jack Ryan series that he's doing, and it feels like a really good, serious version of Reed Richards. Imminent, universal problem solver, someone who is dealing with constant world-ending crisis, universe-ending crisis, but the reason why he's so important is because he's the character that the Avengers go to when they can't solve a problem. Three, Emily Blunt's history with Marvel is actually a little more well documented by the fandom. You've probably heard some of these stories. For a long time, people thought that Marvel had been after her for Captain Marvel, especially around Live, Die, Repeat, because she played a total badass during that movie, when Marvel was still kind of trying to figure out what was going on with the Captain Marvel character. She completely denies that she was ever in the running for Captain Marvel, but the real truth is that she goes way further back with Marvel, just like John Krasinski. It's just a coincidence that they're married to each other in real life, but both of them had been courted by Marvel before they were married. Get this though, back when Iron Man 2 was getting ready to shoot, Marvel originally wanted Emily Blunt to be their Black Widow, not Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett was not Marvel's first pick as Black Widow. Just like Chris Evans though, now you can't picture anyone else playing Black Widow but Scarlett, especially because we're going to get a Black Widow trailer dropping in October. To cut to today, Marvel needs its Fantastic Four, its first family as Kevin Feige calls it. They have two super high profile A-list actors who they really wanted for earlier roles that just did not work out. They've been after them for years to do Marvel characters just waiting for the right opportunity just in the same way that they've been after Keanu Reeves for years. And usually the reason why you don't see them is because they're just waiting for the right character to come along like, oh, you were the only actor that could play this particular character. Now they have that opportunity with Fantastic Four as Reed Richards and Sue Storm. It's just an added bonus coincidence that they're married in real life too. They have that chemistry that's so critical for those two characters. And because it's a reboot, obviously the story is going to have to be an origin story, but they're not going to completely recycle the same stuff over and over. Just the same way that they didn't recycle Uncle Ben during Captain America's Civil War, but they told that story in a way that you had not seen a billion other times in other Spider-Man movies. So it'll be the same thing with Fantastic Four. But number one, the real reason why they're not doing new Wolverine or new X-Men before new Fantastic Four, even though they're way more popular characters, is because they have almost like 90% of the Fantastic Four stuff ready to go. The timing is way better. The Logan movie was way too good of an ending for the Hugh Jackman Wolverine and too recent, as well as X-Men Dark Phoenix scorching the earth of the fandom for the X-Men characters. If you haven't heard the stories, Disney had to take a huge loss on that movie right after they bought Fox. They took a big enough loss that it actually hurt their stock price when they made the announcement. So Disney's going to let the dust settle on those X-Men characters for a good long while before you see any of them pop back up again. And talk about honoring Stan Lee's legacy, Marvel's first family. They came before the X-Men in the comics. We all talk about doing these characters right now that Stan Lee isn't with us anymore. We're not going to see any more Stan Lee cameos. Kevin Feige is a big believer in that, so that just makes them a much bigger priority on the docket than the X-Men characters. 
Right now, the earliest we could see that Fantastic Four movie is 2023. 2023 is a little bit better because that's around the time that Avengers 5 is going to get started. Philip had enough time during Marvel Phase 4 movies like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness to explain weirder stuff as well as the Eternals movie to explain the basis for mutants in the MCU. And think about it this way too, you bring in the Fantastic Four, you bring in Silver Surfer, Galactus, and Doctor Doom. Because now that Marvel kind of lost the Spider-Man characters, they can't really use Norman Osborn as a mega Avengers level villain. Doctor Doom just slid up the bench as the new top pick as huge Earth-based Marvel villain in the Avengers movies. They just re-released Spider-Man Far From Home in theaters. There's an extended cut with a whole bunch of new scenes. If you don't want to go see it, don't worry. I will post a breakdown of all the scenes. While you wait for everything, click here for my brand new Spider-Man Sony Marvel update and click here for my breakdown of the footage from the brand new Avatar The Last Airbender Netflix series. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.